In 2001, two members of Parliament, Francis Maud and Archie Norman, decided to embark on a new project to transform Westminster. They wanted to create a different kind of organisation for the new millennium. One that approached public policy challenges from a social as well as fiscally responsible perspective. Well, we set up two things. Um, we set up Sea uh, Change, which was a pressure group to encourage the Conservative Party to make itself again um, a contemporary force in touch with Britain as it was, not Britain as some Conservatives wanted it to be. And then Policy Exchange was very much about uh, filling what felt like a bit of an intellectual vacuum. Um, there were some think tanks on the centre-right, but they were kind of felt a bit burdened down with history, um, carrying quite a lot of baggage from the 1970s and 1980s. And we felt actually there's a shelf life for think tanks and there was time for a new one and a, a sort of greenfield operation built from new. Policy Exchange was founded in the autumn of 2002. Its principal aim was to produce new workable policy ideas that would not only shape political thinking, but were also attractive to the majority of people outside the Westminster village. Nick Bowles was approached to become Policy Exchange's first director, and Michael Gove, a Times newspaper columnist at the time, became the organisation's first chairman. Located in a tiny office in Storiesgate, Westminster, Policy Exchange offered a completely different kind of setting and approach to the other more established think tanks of the time. A band of young thinkers began to meet on a regular basis. I can remember sitting on the floor in Policy Exchange's first rather uh, grubby offices um, with Nicholas Bowles and Danny Finkelstein, your chairman, and George Osborne and others, as we discussed after the aftermath of the 1997 defeat for the centre-right, uh, should the centre-right modernise? That was the question. Danny provided the Diet Coke. Um, I think Nicholas Bowles provided the pizza. Uh, I wonder whether the idea would ever catch on, uh, but I seem to have benefited from it in, in some way. Um, but it has been hugely influential. Politics can become quite stale, um, and you, they get stuck in a rut. And the civil service, and there are many fantastic people working in the civil service, but they're so caught up into the, in the day-to-day, -day, either the day-to-day -day political battle or the day-to-day -day administrative battle of actually you know, getting houses built, getting p benefit payments paid to people, um, getting people to school on time, that it's much harder for them to stand back and actually think about how to do things differently. Um, and I think in particular also this country has been quite bad at learning from what other countries do. And the truth is there are lots of other countries that face quite similar challenges, um, particularly countries of a similar stage of economic and democratic development. And one of the things that Policy Exchange has always said is, let's have a look, see what other people do, see if there's something we can learn from it. Not to say that we can import ideas completely un reform, that they have to relate to our circumstances. Um, but learning from others, having an open mind, doing proper research, looking at the evidence, and then making some quite bold proposals, that's something that it's hard to get out of government, it's hard to get out of politicians. You need think tanks to do it. The first piece of research called for localism in the police force. It suggested the creation of elected police commissioners, something shortly to be introduced by the current coalition. Over the following years, Policy Exchange grew and Bowles recruited a young public affairs consultant called James O'Shaughnessy to become the organisation's first ever director of research. Yeah, so my background had been education policy and was able to, to continue that having joined Policy Exchange. And the other big issue, I mean, I remember when I was being interviewed by, by Nicholas Bowles and, and Francis Maud for the job, um, we talked about school policy. They'd already done some work. Um, it was seen as a kind of cutting edge issue for, for um, people on the right. But the other issue which I brought up, which I really thought would chime with the values of the organisation, was on housing. Um, you know, up until that point, for the last, the previous sort of 15, 20 years, there had been a growing housing crisis, housing becoming more and more expensive, unaffordable for ordinary families. And I thought, actually, if you look historically at the role that housing has played for um, governments as a progressive issue, building more houses, whether you're Harold Macmillan or Margaret Thatcher in the 1980s about 
spreading the property owning democracy. This was a great opportunity in uh, a policy area that leads to growth, but actually is around you know, helping ordinary families get the kind of uh, homes that they want. And this was a, a huge issue that no one had touched. The Conservatives were very nimbyist. The um, left was very top down, wasn't delivering any units. So there, there was an opportunity there for us. Bowles and O'Shaughnessy wanted to focus on areas of policy close to their hearts and found a television producer in light entertainment with a passion for education to lead their thinking. Charlotte Leslie is now an MP and sits on the Education Select Committee. When I joined Policy Exchange, um, Nick Bowles and James O'Shaughnessy have been sort of working on this idea that I came in on, um, which turned into the report that we wrote, More Good School Places, which was about the pupil premium. And the challenge I suppose we were facing was how do you create a level playing field for children who haven't had the advantages um, of children who've been born into a better socioeconomic background. And that policy very much came out of that and that was an area I was always very interested in. I suppose my political energy always came from a, a sense of very basic glowing injustice about um, your life, where you, where you go in life is so much dictated about where you've come from and what kind of background you're born into. And so that policy for me was combining two things that matter hugely to me, which is social justice and social mobility um, within the education field. That was a very, very important re report. It's actually, you know, produced pretty much two-thirds at any rate of the policies that the government is now pursuing, particularly the supply-side policies, the policies of, of extending academy freedoms to all schools that want them and encouraging free schools, and, and crucially the policy of pupil premium, which I, I always get rather cross because um, some other people claim authorship for this idea. And actually, to be fair, the, the first person, I think, to come up with the idea of a, of a pupil premium, an extra payment for, for disadvantaged kids, was Julian Legrand at um, the LSE. But we were the first people to work it up into a, a policy proposal. So I'm very proud of that. And, and that, of course, is already government policy. I think it's this year for the first time that schools will be receiving a chunk of money specifically related to the number of children who are on free school meals. Janan Ganesh, now political correspondent at The Economist, joined the growing band of men and women who were slowly starting to make a name for themselves in the think tank world. Well, one of the, probably the, the, the thing I did at Policy Exchange, which caused the biggest splash, was a pamphlet called Compassionate Conservatism, which I co-wrote with Jesse Norman, who is now a, an MP. And what made it unusual at the time was that it was a work of theory and kind of political philosophy rather than policy, which can be dry and technical and, and uh, quite jarring for someone outside of Westminster to, to get to grips with. And what we did with the Compassionate Conservatism, which came out in 2006, was you know, a, a brief pamphlet which argued that for decades, everyone in politics, and especially, I suppose, on the, on the right, had dwelt on these two things, the state and the market, and had neglected uh, what lies in between, which is civil society uh, and community and the new battleground of, of politics and policy would take place on that turf. And so we, we cobbled that, that thing together in, in a few months. And we, I remember we were, we were kind of dubious about whether Nick Bowles, who was director at the time, would go for it, precisely because it was such a, a departure from what Policy Exchange did. But he was very enthusiastic about it. And I think what, what appealed to him was that it, it provided Policy Exchange which a kind, with a kind of overarching uh, narrative which connected all the individual policy pamphlets that we were coming out with. And so if the theme of compassionate conservatism was giving power away, um, empowering communities, uh, that was a natural umbrella which covered the things that we were publishing on police reform, schools reform, health reform, housing, planning, um, etc. So it was a kind of um, shorthand guide to the overall worldview of, of the think tank. The modern day policy exchange is unrecognisable from 10 years ago. Under the stewardship of Anthony Brown and now Neil O'Brien, the organisation is the biggest think tank in the UK and covers a wide range of domestic policy areas. In the world after the recession, there are a whole bunch of new challenges. Firstly, trying to control public spending and bring the huge deficit under control, trying to get better growth and more jobs at the same time deliver stronger public services when there's not that much money around so we need to be more innovative and I think policy exchange can help do that because our research is grounded in the real world it's based on empirical evidence it's not just some kind of airy fairy blue sky thinking this is stuff that politicians can pick up and they can implement tomorrow to improve people's lives.
I'm genuinely delighted to be here tonight because I think policy exchange has had a great influence on our national life, is having a great influence, and I believe will go on to do even greater things in the future. Oh, well, policy exchange is everywhere. I mean, it is enormously influential uh, and has done everything and much more than I think I could have hoped for when it was a twinkle in my eye. Well, the first thing I would, should say, because it's true, um, is that I had vastly more influence when I was running Policy Exchange than I do now as a, a junior backbencher. I mean, there is no question that um, good think tanks with a proper reputation for sort of fearless independence um, command a level, at a time when politicians command ever less respect, um, they command ever more respect. And you'll find that the media are much more likely to go to a think tank to ask for a view on something than they are to a, a politician. And the reason policy exchange is seen, at least on the centre-right, as the place to go is partly because the, the, the ideas themselves are presented in such a kind of immediately accessible way. You know, the, 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 the heavy lifting is done, but it's then uh, packaged into an off-the-shelf policy solution to the, to the problems of the day. And so it's easy for journalists to, to get their head around them. And the other thing is that policy exchange is still seen as hugely influential with politicians and with government. And I think th 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 being confident that the thing you're reading has a good chance of eventually being translated into government policy or at least starting a conversation when it comes to government policy is the ultimate incentive to read that pamphlet in the, in the first place. You know you're not wasting your time. Well, for me, it's quite simple. In the end of the, at the end of the day, if you want a policy that is actually going to work or could work in government, there's one place that you go to, and that's policy exchange. I mean, there are lots of think tanks. Lots of them produce opinion pieces, rants, you know, great rhetoric, uh, others highly theoretical stuff. But the question is, each of those, can you actually take them off the shelf almost and do something about them? And the truth is, with a lot of them, you can't. And I think what policy exchange has always prided itself on, and still does now, is that the work that it does, the ideas it comes up with, are pretty much oven ready. You know, a minister who wants to run with them can go to take a policy exchange report, look at some recommendations in it, and within months, which is relatively quick for government, um, to have something that reflects that in, in, in some detail. So that, if you like, that for me is the, is the big contribution that policy exchange makes. When I was writing the report with, with James, I never dreamt for a minute that a few years down the line, I would be a candidate um, for the Conservative Party fighting a marginal seat um, and the, the pupil premium would have been picked up and was so much a part of political dialogue and then of course I would never have dreamt that the pupil premium itself would have been one of the major planks of forming the coalition and to have seen a project from its inception right through to its playing a role in a government of which I was an MP was something that was absolutely extraordinary. Um, and I would, if you told me that when I was working back on that report in 2005, I wouldn't have believed it, but I'd have been very happy. Policy exchange has come a long way over the past 10 years. There's an almost constant round of events and publications designed to share our thoughts with policy formers and opinion leaders across the political spectrum. More and more of our ideas are shaping government thinking on an increasingly wide range of topics, from behavioural change to counter-terrorism, from planning to economic growth. But at its heart, it remains what it set out to be, a research-driven generator of policies designed to modernise both the country and the government of it. I'm incredibly proud of it, actually. I think the people who, who took it forward from the time uh, when we set it up, uh, the three directors there have been have done a superb job and the chairman who've uh, uh, had custody of its affairs, I think it's done brilliantly. So I'm very, very proud of it.